Welcome back. Just a little bit like Midas, everything he touched for a while seemed to turn to gold. He's a mining and a movie mogul. Most recently, though, Frank Juster's attention has focused on the business of giving. He joins us now. Great to have you here. Nice to be back. Thank you. You, you, have, uh, you really made headlines a couple of years ago when you joined the Clinton Global Initiative and you made a big ticket commitment to that. And really, I mean, you joined him. You literally put your mind as well as your money behind it. So let's start there because that's kind of when I came to know what you're up to. What, what motivated you to do that? Well, it was really the, uh, I had the privilege of spending a lot of time with him. Once we got to know each other, we traveled the world, and I got very much involved in his HIV AIDS initiative and supported that not only with my own money, but I also raised a lot of money from other people. And watching him operate around the world and seeing how effective he was, I, I thought, boy, that this, and he knew how to work with, with, with the business sector, and that gave me the idea about creating the Clinton Juicer Sustainable Growth Initiative, which is really a partnership between uh, <clears throat> nonprofit groups, governments, and the business sector, mainly the mining sector. Frank, let me ask you a pragmatic question about this. You're giving away a huge amount of money, maybe over a hundred million dollars here. It is a business in itself. How do you measure it, and how do you make sure that when you give this kind of money away, it's effective? Are there any metrics you put in place to measure whether it's being put to work the way you want it to be put to work? Well, it, it, that's the essence of, of the initiative, is that we've designed it uh, based on looking for real and measurable results. And we've actually uh, staffed our organization with uh, people that do just that, just monitor and evaluate and see whether our results are effective and we're achieving what it is what we set out to achieve. One of the things that is striking about uh, Canadians, and I don't say this with any disrespect to well-meaning Canadians, is that really overall our giving comes from a very few wealthy people. Unlike some other countries, we really do rely on people like you, uh, people like Seymour Schulich, people like Peter Monk, who give millions, tens of millions, uh, and the rest of us give teensy tiny amounts. Why do you think that is? What is it about us? I, I, I don't, I'm not sure that, that, that I believe that. I think that there's just, there are less of us to, to begin with. Um, there's uh, less wealth in this country than there is, say, in the United States, um, where you have you know, maybe seven, eight, well, at least last year you had about 700 billionaires in, in the U.S. alone. So, um, but I see a growing trend. I see a trend where it's becoming important uh, for people that have wealth to, to find a way to uh, uh, not depart this earth with that wealth. Uh, I don't think there's anything glamorous about, you know, dying with a fat bank account. And I think more and more people, the people at least that I'm speaking with, are, are coming to that realization. So I'm not sure I believe that. Frank, are you agnostic to geography? Is there some special place of the world where you'd rather put more of the dollars to work than less? And what about people at home, your own Canadian citizens, your own people? Why not give more to them? What do you, how, what, how do you answer that question when Canadians say to you, wait a minute, Frank, why are you sending all this money abroad? How about helping us? Well, as a matter of fact, I do both. Uh, I think that a proper philanthropic plan, if you're someone with the means, is to do uh, both, to do half of your philanthropic giving in your own community and half abroad if, if, that's, if that's where your interest lies. And as a matter of fact, I'm very much involved in um, uh, an interesting organization in Vancouver called the Street to Home Foundation, which deals with homelessness in Vancouver. And it's something that I've been involved with for two years now, helped conceptualize, helped put together, and it's now coming, becoming a reality. And that will receive a substantial amount of my own you know, commitments going forward. Uh, and that is one obviously heading towards uh, Vancouver Olympics that people are quite focused on. Um, have you seen, do you feel a change given what's happened in the markets to people's personal fortunes that, that there's less to give out there? Is there that feeling? Well, I, you know, I'm always fond of saying that, you know, the first thing that people do when, when you know, the ec economic situation deteriorates is to hide their wallets. And, you know, that's a natural reaction. You know, fear is the first thing that overcomes you. And, you know, I, I've had to deal with that myself. And I think, you, as I've always said, is you have to give your head a shake. If you're a person of, of wealth and you have excess wealth, you have to continue to give. And I think it's counterproductive not to give. Do you think we should make it more tax advantageous for people to give? I think, you know, I think that the tax situation is fine in this country in terms of, 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 of what, what you're allowed to do if you set up a foundation. I, I'm not that certain that we need to be incentivizing people any more than we already do. All right. Frank, great to have you here. Nice to be here. Thank you.